Hey guys, what's up? This is your girl Whitney on As Told by Whitney. Today I'm going to be doing my makeup and telling you about a murder mystery that I found that was interesting to me and just crazy. The series that I'm starting for this week is going to be basically the Black Widows Club. Now, everybody knows what a Black Widow is. For those of you who don't know what a Black Widow is, a Black Widow is a woman who basically marries for whether it's some type of love she has in her head or vision of love for money, for sex, for status, for anything like that. And when she gets it, she takes her husband out, collects the insurance money and the status and everything else and moves on to the next one. So, yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Just, just, and you know what? The more I, I start to look into these murders and crimes, especially when I was doing the Black Widow one, there are a lot of women, especially in like the 1930s, 40s, and 50s that love to kill. I mean, like, I came across so many. And I was sitting there thinking, like, did y'all not want to get married? It just, but I digress. Anyway, so if I'm looking this way, it's because I have a mirror right here also. So, okay. The first person, or the first woman that I am going to, that we're going to talk about today is a woman by the name of Nanny Dross, Dose, excuse me. She had so many damn names. Okay, now, Nanny in the media after the story broke in the 1950s was, she basically was dubbed by the media, the giggling granny, the jolly black widow, and the giggling nanny her nickname. Now, her real name was, sorry, her real name, oh, excuse me. Now, her real name was Nancy Hazel. Now, Nancy was born in 1905. On November 4th, 1905, in Blue Mountain, Alabama, to the somewhat loving parents of Louisa and James Hazel. Now, she was the, I think, the third of the five children that her mother and father had. She had one brother and two sisters i mean three sisters excuse me but now the thing with nanny nanny was her and her mother absolutely hated their father and her husband they hated this man. now because of where they were in Alabama in the 1900s, basically there really wasn't much job. So her father owned a family farm. Now, her and her siblings, they went to school like all normal kids did. But the bad part was he didn't care. He could give a rat's ass about their education. He is He could give a rat's ass about it. He really could have. All he cared about is the fact that his farm needed to be ran. So if he needed to pull them out of school, he was pulling them out of school no matter what. So because of this, Nancy really did not do well in school. She really didn't. She basically struggled. What made it worse was when she was seven years old, her fam her and her family was basically on a train ride. Because remember, that's probably the only way you can get around in those days. 
And while they were on this train ride, something happened. And all of a sudden, the train did a very hard sudden stop. Now, because of this, sadly, Nancy fell over and hit her head very, very hard. And because of this, she was diagnosed with severe migraines, blackouts, well, frequent blackouts, and depression. Now, her father, to him, she was fine. She was faking it. How the hell do you fake a blackout and depression? It's beyond me. But anyway, so when because of this, coupled with the fact that she already didn't do well in school, she really was depressed. So by the time she got to high school, she was done. Now, Nancy in interview said her favorite pastime was reading her mother's no romance novels and books. Her books, the local newspaper apparently printed romance novellas at the time. So that was her favorite pastime to do. And because of this, in her head, she basically formed the idea of the perfect man. And ladies, we all know there's no such thing as the perfect man. But again, I digress. So after that, she basically started to grow up. Now, she did, as all young girls do, they have to grow up at some point. Now, James saw that his girls were growing up. He did. It's, it's inevitable. They have to grow up. It's human freaking nature. So, and he also saw how his daughters actually looked. So, he forbid them from wearing any type of flattering type of clothing, whether it was dresses or skirts. They had to wear frumpy type of clothing. And plus, you could not even think about wearing makeup year so his reasoning for doing it because he even made his wife the same way where his wife couldn't dress in appealing tired to other men now because of this it kind of pissed nancy and her sisters off his reasoning for doing it basically was to keep prying eyes off of them and from them getting molested now, unfortunately, Nancy did report that despite of their father making them dress conservative from the fear of being molested, unfortunately, they were molested. But the thing is, they didn't have to worry Apparently, about strangers doing it. If you get my drift. And honestly, it happened on several. And I mean several locations. I mean several occasions. Now, Nancy again, she grew up. Now, by this time... She was 16. She was in high school. Her father made her still go to school. Well, her mother made her father let her go to school. Her and her sisters go to school. Now, at 16, again, she's in high school. She met her very first husband. And her first husband was named Charlie Braggs. Now, Charlie at the time was basically her first boyfriend, her first love. Now, they end up working together at a linen factory. That's where they technically met. I'm sorry, she was of high school age. I'm sorry. So, 
within four months, four months, four months of them meeting, they got married. So, within those four months, they got married. Now, she thought because she was marrying him. And with her father's approval at that, she's thinking, yes, I can get away from my dad. I can, I can finally live my life. She was sadly, sadly mistaken at that. Because it turned out that Charlie was a mama's boy. And not only was she a mama's boy, not only was he a mama's boy, but he was an alcoholic. To top it off. You kind of can't help but feel sorry for her in a way. Because she escaped one prison and basically went into a whole nother one. And the bad part, she said, the worst part about living with Charlie was not Charlie himself, but his mother. Because his mother was so controlling of his life, she basically moved in with no invitation from even Charlie or her. Now, when she moved in, it is said by Nancy that her mother-in-law made her life a living hell. She basically told her what to do, what to wear, what to eat. She basically ruled her life. She that basically what it was. She ruled that woman's life. Now it is quoted by Nancy herself saying, I married as my father wanted in 1921 to a boy I only knew for four or five months who had no family, who only had a mother who was unwed and had taken over my life completely when we got married. She has never seen anything wrong that her son does, but only what I did. She got so bad to her, she wouldn't even let my own mother stay the night with me, end quote. Now, to me, mother-in-law, no mother-in-law, you, you got to go. I'm sorry. We, we, two women cannot stay in the same household together. It, it, it just can't happen. It really just can't. But, again, so after that, even though she hated her life there, she bore, she gave birth to four beautiful children. Now, because of this, for some reason, his mother, Charlie's mother, basically controlled even him to the point where it was almost sickening and weird, apparently. Because I read a few articles where the mother would basically give them a schedule to, you know what. But anyway, now, for some reason, again, like I said, this pissed Nancy off. Because she had no freedom. She couldn't do what she wanted. She couldn't go anywhere. So it was just, what do I do? And like I said, her four daughters was born from the years of 1923 to 1927. Now, between the stress of the babies, the stress of Charlie, the stress of his mother, she began drinking so heavily. And like her casual smoking habit turned into a full-blown addiction. Now, both her and Charlie were born both just they it's they suspected each other of cheating and to be honest they both were right although their reports that said that even he admitted he did start cheating first 
because he couldn't take the pressures of being a full time dad and a full time husband. I mean, why the fuck get married? Just, 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 just why even get married? Just why even get married? Anyway, now remember, I said she had four children. Now, in 1927, sadly, her two middle children died of food poisoning. They were rushed to the hospital after they were reportedly told their dad they were not feeling well. They had stomach problems. Now, for some reason, Charlie suspected his wife. He didn't know why, but it was just a feeling in him that he suspected his wife. Now, I don't blame him really in this that he left i really don't but what i do blame is he didn't take both kids after the death of his two middle children he said you know what he took his firstborn her name was melvina remember that name he just said you know what i'm leaving so, he basically left right after his kids died. And right after his kids died, guess who else died? The mother-in-law. Yeah. She poisoned the mother-in-law. Now, again, because of these deaths, no one, even though, they, even though at the time, with the kids, they suspected food poisoning, they just thought the kids ate something that they wasn't supposed to. And that's the reason why they died. Even with the mother-in-law, it looked like she died of natural causes. So, now, in the summer of 1928, he decided to come back. When he came back, he came back with another woman who was a divorcee who had her own child. Now, he was like, you know what? I'm done with this. I want a divorce. And they basically got a divorce. And when they got a divorce, he basically left both the oldest and the youngest, Florine, with their mother. Because remember, when he left the first time, he only took the oldest. He left the newborn with her. So he soon left both kids with her and said you know what screw it you can take both kids now after now when it was all said and done a few years later after all this had happened he was interviewed and the cops basically asked him well why did you leave her he was like to be honest i was afraid of her he was like after the death of our kids i basically could not look at her the same and I was terrified. So he left. Even though he left two children with him, but hey. I guess. So now here comes her second marriage. Now this time this time, because of those romance novels that she so fell in love with she found another husband, her second husband, in a column called the Lonely Hearts Special or Lonely Hearts Column. Now, this column was apparently where men put ads to meet women so they can be married or, you know, a little hanky panky baby. So, they met in 1929. Five days after they met, they got married. Five days. Whew. Now, at this time, she really didn't, because she had just met him, she really did not know about his past. How he truly was. Which one would not know if you just met the man and just married him? Of course, you're not going to know how he truly is. 
But a couple of months into the marriage, she found out that he was just like her father and Charlie. He was a severe alcoholic. He was a severe alcoholic and a womanizer. And also, he had a criminal's, criminal record for assault on his partners. Now, for some rhyme or reason, somehow, some way, they stayed married for 16 years. How he put up with this woman for 16 years, yeah, hats off to him. Now, remember her oldest daughter? Her oldest daughter basically got married. And she left the house, kind of around the same age that her mom did, got married, and had a baby. This was in 1943. She had a beautiful little boy by the name of Robert Lee Hayes. Now, oh crap, I did something so wrong just now. Now, because of this, now, I mean, I'm sorry, not because of this. Two years later, she gave birth to a beautiful, healthy, remember that, healthy baby girl. And when she gave birth to this baby, when Malvina gave birth to this baby, who by all means, the doctors and nurses had it already cleared and said that this child was healthy. By all accounts, this child was healthy. So, can you tell me why? Not even a few hours later, the baby, unfortunately, was pronounced dead. Now, Melvina remembers, she was now, she was still groggy from the medication they gave her, which was ether if I remember being if I remember correctly she was still groggy and slightly in and out of consciousness at this time she could have sworn and she could have sworn that she could have sworn that she saw her mother stick a hat pin in the top of her baby's head. A head pin woman. A head pin. What does baby do to you? Anyway. She was like. No. Something's not right. Even doctors could not. Give any type of. Plausible. Excuse of why this. Healthy child. Otherwise, died who they just checked not that long ago. So, it was later, of like a day or so. Well, really, that same day. Ravina asked her husband. She was like, I know I'm not tripping. She's like, did my mom have something over my baby? And her husband, her um, husband and her sister... Florine basically said, mom came up to us, told us the baby was dead. But when she had the baby, she did have a pin. So, yeah, she basically killed an innocent newborn for absolutely no reason. Now... Because of this, because of the loss of their daughter, unfortunately, her, Marvina and her husband split. They couldn't take, despite the fact that they still had another baby, they just couldn't take the loss of their precious baby girl, which is, which is understandable. You just had this baby and the baby was healthy as far as you guys know, and then all of a sudden it's, she's, she's dead. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I wholeheartedly do. As a mom, I understand. So now because of this, 
Marvin is alone, basically taking care of the baby. And one night, she met a soldier. Now, this soldier and her, Nancy thought she was just grieving the loss of her daughter. So that's why she turned to the soldier. Now, she didn't like this dude at all. Not one thing about him she actually liked. I mean, none. So, because of this, her and Marvina had a huge fight. And this resulted in Marvina saying, you know what? I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going to visit my dad. I'm, I'm, I'm going to visit my dad. That's it. I, I can't do this. So, she left and left the baby. <laughs> she left the baby in care of her mother, the oldest little boy, Robert. Now... Sadly, on July 7, 1945, he was, he was pronounced dead. He died of asphyxia. And even the doctors were kind of like slightly puzzled of how. Like they knew what asphyxia was, but they was just like, how? So, but unbeknownst to anyone her mother robert's mother his father she took out a 500 dollars life policy on him and she collected that check two months later yeah oh i don't know if i said but she did collect uh, uh i don't think she collected a check yeah she didn't kill her first person never, never. Now, the last straw for Nancy with this current husband was on the evening in 1945. Now, it is said, she described it as the night that Japan surrendered to the Allied powers at the end of World War II. Because of this, he was celebrating, he was heavily drinking, and he came home and... He raped Nancy. Now, I don't want nobody in the comments saying, I don't want that. Leave this woman alone. I understand. She was raped. That's her husband. Yes, it still does not give him the right to do that. Now, because of this, and coupled with everything else he had then put her through, she said enough was enough. So she went out to her rose garden where she knew he kept his corn whiskey jar because he kept it in her rose garden. I guess to hide the smell, I guess, because wasn't prohibition like around that time, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments because I think prohibition was like around that time. So I think that's why he mainly did it. She said, you know what? Enough's enough. She basically poured some of it out and topped the rest of it with rat poisoning and gave it to him. He died a very slow and very painful death. And then she collected an insurance policy for him. Yeah. Now, this is where everything, you, you got to kind of keep up now. Because this is where everything kind of, I think this is at the point to where she kicks literally everything into high gear and say, you know what, screw all this. I'm not even, I'm not even worried about nothing at this point. It's, it's just going to kick into high gear. Now, she met her third husband. His name was Arlie Langs. Art, excuse me, Arlie Langington. Now, she met him through again this damn Lonely Hearts column where she left and went to Lexington, Lexington, God, I cannot talk tonight. She went to Lexington, North Carolina. Now, when she got there, she married him three days later. 
three, three days later. Whew. Now, again, what she didn't know about him was he was an he was a raging alcoholic and a womanizer. You starting to see a pattern here in the men she pick, or is it just me? Because you you have a type, baby girl. You 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 have a type. Now, in this marriage, instead of it always being her husband disappeared, she just started disappearing days at a time. Because at this point, remember, she has, her kids aren't with her. She has no more grandchildren. Her mother and father are off in her hometown of Alabama, so she basically can do what the hell she wants. So she leaves for days to months on end. And I mean months on end. But now when she was home... She was a doting wife. She was, I mean, the epitome of a stellar housewife. She cooked, she cleaned, she doted on him, and everything else under the sun. Now, you know what? She said, you know what? I'm done. Now, he died of, he unfortunately died of heart failure. But the thing was, even with his death, it was a little bit of suspense surrounding it. The only difference this time is the one thing that she wanted was their house. She couldn't get the house because somehow he set it up to where his sister would get the house. Now, two months, two months before his sister was supposed to collect the house, it mysteriously burned down. And guess who has received the insurance check for that? Ding, ding, ding. Nancy did. Nancy received the insurance check. It was undergoes. I couldn't find the amount that the insurance check was for, but it was a considerable um, an amount. Now, she took that insurance money and banked it. Then, a month later, his mom passed away in her sleep. Yeah, the mama. After the mom died in her sleep, she hightailed it from North Carolina. And she went to her sister, Dovey's house. Now, her sister was, I believe, Dovey was reported to be the youngest sister. Now, Dovey had cancer and she was, unfortunately, bedridden. So she basically couldn't really do anything for herself at this time. And because of that, she basically fell victim to her sister. She died about, I think I read like a week or so after her sister Nancy arrived. Now... Whew. looking for another husband. She instead, this time, joined a dating service called the Diamond Circle Club. Now, this was supposed to be better than the columns. It was supposed to, they were supposed to screen the people that they actually let become members of this club. Yeah, Nancy flew right on that, right, right on. She just flew right under it so she met a man by the name of richard morton now morton was from madison county arkansas now i'm sorry no he was from jamestown north carolina they married in 1952 in kansas okay now you gotta keep up now now, he didn't have, now, the one thing he had going from him, for him was he didn't have a drinking problem. He didn't. The only thing he had wrong was he was adulterous, or a.k.a. he was a hoe. That was his biggest problem. That was her biggest problem with him. So, because of this, she said, you know what? I'm done. Now, before she can fully say I'm done, her mama, Louisa, came stay with them. She, The mom came stay with them because her husband, Nancy's father, James, 
unfortunately died of natural causes. He really did die of natural causes. When the mama came, stay, her and the mama constantly, constantly got into it. I mean, they got into it over everything. And she said, and good old Nancy said, you know what? F this, I'm done. I don't want you here. So instead of putting her mama out, like a normal person probably would have, or checked her mama, she decided to poison her mama. So January of 1950, her mother died of cyanide poison, poisoning. Three months later, on May 19th, she poisoned Richard. Now, because of this, because Dovey is now, because Dovey is dead, Martin had really no siblings that he talked to. And the dad has died. She basically collected everybody's insurance checks. I mean, all three. Because the money that her dad left her mom, it in turn went to her when her mom died. And she made Richard put out an insurance policy on him. So basically, she got three insurance checks. You know what? You know what I want to say? I know there was no computers back then, and there was barely any technology. But how did none of these insurance companies realize this one woman is collecting all these insurance checks? Whether it's houses burning down, or her husband's all dying, or somebody dying, she's collecting all these checks. Like, Come on. Who we gonna take a deep breath? <clears throat> but anyway, she then went back to the Diamond Club. And this time she met a name. She met a man. I'm sorry. Excuse me. By this point, she met a man by the name uh oh. <laughs> She met a man by the name of Samuel Dose. Fortunately, and fortunately, her last victim. Now, the thing with Samuel was Samuel was nothing. And I mean nothing. Excuse me. I'm a little thirsty. <laughs> Samuel was nothing. Like her other husbands at all. He was nothing like them. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He was an adulterer. He basically was basically the epitome of a perfect husband. He was a god fear man. And to top it off, he was a Nazarene minister. Whoo, po baby. Now, because of this, because he was a minister, he lived a very devout life, like most ministers do. But, excuse me, but because it was a very devout life, it was also a very strict life. Now, it is reported by Nancy, and even people who knew him in the town where they stayed, because... He was a widower. Now, before he met Nancy, I think a few months or almost a year before he met Nancy, his wife and his nine kids perished in, our in a tornado that basically rocked their city or county. The tornado killed his wife and nine kids. So, he basically, when he met Nancy, he was lonely. And because of this, and after it was all said and done, they had many say that they think he fell in love with Nancy. So, he wouldn't be alone anymore. But he was head over heels for her. And because of this, he was a doting husband to her. I mean... He was doting. But the thing, two things she had it the most about Samuel 
was that he was frugal, meaning he barely ever gave her any money. I mean, he basically even, it was to the point that he paid the bills himself every month. He paid the bills in the house. That way he would know for sure if it was getting paid. And he was boring, meaning he didn't like to do anything but preach, go home, and go to sleep, eat, that's it. Maybe not in that order, but that was basically what she liked to do. Now, she hated this fact that he wouldn't give her money. So good old Nancy said, you know what? Screw this. Fuck this. I'm leaving. She packed her bags and she left. And she went to Alabama. Now... This should have been kind of like a signal or a Hail Mary or a saving grace, whatever you want to call it, for Samuel to leave this woman alone. But no, he didn't. Sadly, he begged her to come back. And Nancy's response was, I will come back. Only if you put me as an account C on your account, meaning that I can write checks, I can go to the bank and do what I want with your checking account. As long as I'm on your account, then I will come back. And because he loved her, because he loved her, he said yes. So Nancy came back. Oh, she came high selling it back from Alabama. And the minute that was, I guess, signed in a dotted line that she was his, I don't even know what to call it, his accountancy, as soon as that ink was dry, she was a doting wife. She was cooking, she was cleaning, she was doing all kind of stuff to make sure that he stayed happy. Now... All of a sudden, Nancy, I mean, not Nancy, I'm sorry. Now, all of a sudden, he took sick. And when he took sick, I mean, he took severely sick to where he had to be rushed to the hospital. Now, when he was rushed to the hospital, right before he was rushed to the hospital, like right before she poisoned him, she made him take out two life insurance policies on itself, naming Nancy the sole beneficiary. Now, he did that. He did it. Because, again, he loved and trust Nancy. That was his boo. That was the love of his freaking life besides his wife. That was the love of his life. So, it was said... Probably by the time the insurance papers even got to the insurance office, he had to be rushed to the hospital. Now, when he was rushed to the hospital, the hospital at first thought it was the flu. But then they saw that it was he was having severe stomach problems. Like, I mean, to the point to where um, in one article it was said that he was vomiting. He was, he was like even vomiting just nothing at one point and that he was just violently violently ill and I'm like and for some way by some miracle he stayed in the hospital for two weeks and he recovered by God's grace he recovered now when he recovered again he stayed in there two weeks the doctors let him go home nancy of course went to the hospital as the doting wife hell she was at the hospital almost every day she brought him home now this is where she fucked up in my opinion this is where 
she she fucked up. Now, the reason why I say she fucked up was the night this man got home. Remember those two insurance policies? Yeah. The night he got home, bro. The night he got home. The night he got home. It's not funny. I'm sorry. It's really not funny. It is sad by all accounts that this man had to die because of this horrible woman. But it is, to me, his death was karma to her because she cooked him a home cooked meal that was not even laced, was doused in arsenic. Now, because of this, he had to go back to the hospital. He went back to the hospital. The doctors, when the doctors saw that it was him being rolled in on the gurney, they were like, the doctors were like, wait a minute, hold on, hell no, something's not right. We literally just treated this man five, five to six hours ago. There's no way he should be this sick to the point where he's on his deathbed. Sadly, two hours after he arrived at the hospital, he was pronounced dead. Now, the doctors at the hospital was like, you know what? Nope, 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 something's not right. And thankfully, they basically did an autopsy. Thank God. Now, when they did this autopsy, they saw that... I'm so sorry, y'all. I cannot seem to find my brush. Like, my big brush and my contour. Like, I can't find it. But anyway... The doctor said, you know what? Screw this. It's something that's not right about this. There's no way he should have died going home. There's no way he should have died. So the doctors, again, like I said, they ordered an autopsy. When they ordered the autopsy, the coroner was quoted as saying that all of his organs was coated in arsenic. Yeah. Coated, bruh. You couldn't have just 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 coated my coated my dude. Coated. So as soon as police found this out, they I mean as soon as the doctors found this out, they immediately, I mean immediately called the police. They immediately called the police and told the police, okay, you need to pick up this woman. Now, when the police showed up at Nancy's house, I guess she was tired at this point because she said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to turn myself in. I, let's go. I did it. Now, when she got to the police station, the police didn't even have to question her that long before she admitted to them that she killed him. She admitted. She was like, you know what? She's like, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Can I be honest with y'all? She's like, let's, let's be real. She's like, not only did I kill Samuel, but listen to this and listen to this well. If y'all was keeping count, let, let, let's count it off for us. She admitted she killed four of her five husbands. She killed her mother her sister, Dovey, her grandson, Robert, her baby granddaughter, her uh, ex-husband's um, mother. <laughs> that's her mother. So that's, that's how many now? The police at this point couldn't even believe it. They, like, legit couldn't even believe that this woman did this. Like, they legit was just, just like... Who, who, who are you? Now, when she asked how, she literally would joke to the media. Like, after this case broke out, she joked to the media that she killed most of her husbands with a sweet potato pie she laced with arsenic. 
she basically says she laced them with arsenic. She laced the pies with arsenic and it basically killed them. Now, she said this not only to reporters, but in the courthouse. Who that's that's that 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 highlight led to popping. Now, the jury and her defense attorney and even the prosecutor did not, and the judge did not even find this remotely funny. Like, they didn't find this shit remotely funny. So, the jury was like, you know what, by this time, by the time that she was arrested and convicted, she was 50 years old. But see, this is the, this, this is the thing that pissed me off a little bit, to be honest about this case. She was only tried. She was only tried for the murder of Samuel. She was only for some... And that's the thing. That's what a lot of people at the time did not understand. Hold on. I can't do mascara and talk at the same time. Now, for some reason, for some odd reason, even though she confessed to all those murders, and I think in total it's like 11 murders, even though she confessed to all of them, she was only charged for Samuels. She was only charged for his. Now, she was given a life sentence. She was. And even in the courtroom, she basically kind of was like, eh, okay, I accept it. What it is, it is what it is. Now, like I said again, she was not convicted for the other murders, but some people was like, okay, at least she's in jail for life. Now, while she was in jail, what the hell? Now, while she was in jail, she when she went to jail was me of nineteen fifty five now I'm sorry y'all I have like dark lipstick I don't know why I've always preferred dark lipstick sorry now in nineteen fifty five like I said she was convicted of the murder of Samuel but not the other. Now, in 1963, she spent, by this time, she was in prison eight years. After spending eight years in prison, sadly, Nancy passed away of leukemia in the Oklahoma State Penitentiary, where she served eight of her years for a life sentence. She was not eligible for parole. They wanted to give her the death sentence, but apparently they didn't for some reason. I don't know why they didn't give her the death penalty, but hey, who am I to judge? It makes, but you know what though? It, this case made me think because it made it makes you kind of think because even in the some of the court proceedings that I read, because this was in the fifties when she was caught, there were a lot of people asking. Was she basically crying out for help? Was she a black widow by choice? Was she a black widow by design? And it kind of begs the question of, are we bred serial killers? Do we actually breed serial killers? As parents, do we breed serial killers? So, if you can ask me that question, leave a comment in the description box below. Love you guys. And if you have any other suggestions of any other women or men or even, sadly, child murderers that you want to see and have me research and talk about here on my channel, let me know. Like I said, this is a murder mystery channel. I would do murder mysteries, true crimes, and uh, conspiracy theories. But, again, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I love you guys and have a blessed night. Mwah.